Hello, everybody, and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian, and I'm here to bring you the next episode in our continuing series about the constellations. We've done it. We've made it to winter, and that means we need to talk about perhaps the most famous constellation. I am, of course, talking about the constellation Orion, the hunter. Orion is a very bright, very large constellation that dominates the winter sky. Orion is one of the easiest constellations to find in the night sky because he's composed of seven very bright stars, and three of them are very close together in nearly a straight line. These three stars form Orion's belt. Two legs below the belt and two shoulders above complete the hourglass shape that forms Orion's body. More nearby stars fill in the details, like Orion's head, a shield held out in front of him, and a club poised to strike. Orion is a very bright constellation, and of all of the constellations, probably looks the most like how he's supposed to look. In many cultures across the world, these stars form the figure of a man. Orion is the most important constellation of winter. In future episodes, we will use Orion to find every winter constellation. That's because Orion sits smack in the middle of a collection of many of the brightest stars we can see from Earth. On a clear winter night, Orion will command attention in the night sky, but allow your eyes to drift a little further afield and you will start to see a large circle of stars surrounding Orion. This large, vaguely circular group of stars is the Winter Circle. Four of the ten brightest stars are on this circle, and all of the stars on the circle are among the 25 brightest stars seen from Earth. In future episodes, we will examine each of these stars, so we will be returning to the Winter Circle frequently. But today is all about Orion, and there is a lot to talk about. Orion is composed of some very bright stars. All seven that compose the hourglass shape of Orion's body have names. All but one of these stars has names that originated in Arabic, dating to a time when the Arab world was the center of astronomy and scientific thought. Those names were corrupted through centuries of translation into Latin, Italian, English, and other languages. The two brightest stars are Rigel in Orion's leg and Betelgeuse in Orion's arm. Rigel is a blue supergiant star. About 20 solar masses, Rigel's surface is more than twice as hot as the sun's. It may be the brightest star within a thousand light years from the sun. Rigel is burning through its stellar fuel quickly. The star is only about 8 million years old, but it has already exhausted its supply of hydrogen fuel in its core. Rigel is probably fusing helium into heavier elements right now. Rigel will one day in the future explode as a supernova, but Betelgeuse is even closer. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star nearing the end of its life. It's slightly less massive, but comparable in age to Rigel, and appears further along in its life cycle than Rigel is. It's also huge. Betelgeuse is about 20 times more massive than the sun, but its radius is almost 800 times the sun's radius. Were Betelgeuse to replace the sun in our solar system, Betelgeuse would extend to nearly the orbit of Jupiter. Betelgeuse is relatively close, only about 550 light years away. Because it's close and huge, Betelgeuse is one of the few stars in the universe that we have imaged the surface. This is the actual extended surface of an alien star. Though blurry, we've been able to identify changes on the surface, like dimming events and star spots. Just like Rigel, Betelgeuse will explode as a supernova, but it will happen sooner than the Rigel supernova. Betelgeuse is expected to explode in the next 100,000 years or so, soon in the astronomical sense. When it does, it will be visible by eye, reaching a peak brightness a significant fraction of the full moon. It will likely be visible during the day. It will leave a very compact neutron star in its place. While the brightest stars in Orion are nearing the end of their lives, Orion is also home to stars just starting their lives. Hanging from Orion's belt is a sword made of stars. The sword appears distinctly fuzzy to the eye. That's because the fuzzy light is actually a cloud of gas and dust. This is the Great Orion Nebula. The Great Orion Nebula lies about 1400 light years away from Earth. It is a stellar nursery, a location of star formation. A number of these stars have recently, in the astronomical sense, ignited and blown out an enormous bubble in the cloud. From Earth, we're looking down into this bubble to see the core group of stars responsible for it. The Orion Nebula is one of the brightest nebulae seen from Earth. It's 
easy to spot by eye as long as you're someplace relatively dark and looks wonderful in even small telescopes. The Orion Nebula is just a portion of a larger complex of nebulae that covers the entire constellation of Orion. The complex includes other nebulae like the Running Man Nebula, the Flame Nebula, the famous Horsehead Nebula, a stream of gas and dust called Barnard's Loop that can show up in photographs, and two large molecular clouds crashing into each other. This region of the sky is one of the most active locations of star formation in the galaxy. Orion is one of the greatest constellations because it checks every box. It's bright and easy to find. It looks like what it's meant to represent, and it's jam-packed with interesting objects. It's a wonderful area of the sky for advanced amateurs as well as brand new beginners. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and look for Orion the Hunter and explore this incredible region of the sky. That's it for today. Next time, we'll be using Orion to find another constellation of the winter sky. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies.